The next block is J7, and J7 has all these little bitty nine patch blocks, and this block is the exact opposite of C12. C12 had the nine patch blocks here, and these plain blocks here. So actually this one has less pieces than C12. This one has 41 and C12 had 49. So it's not terribly a lot of comfort. So we have all of these little half inch squares and I have laid them all out. And each one of my little squares has an arrow on it because I have a directional fabric. And I decided that I was gonna fussy cut that little um, flower thing into each one of these. So every one of these has a little flower on the front of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna base these and I'm gonna try to base them opposite. So in other words, if I do these here first and then this, that would mean that I would do this first and then this. It seems to give me a sharper edge so that I don't have this folded over last and this folded over last because there's a little bit more bulk in each one of these that's folded over last. And so it just seems to give me a better edge than when I did it on J6, the middle had a nine patch and then there was these little striped things up here. And I don't know if it actually does give you a better edge, but that's how I'm gonna do it and that's what I'm gonna think. So I will do, put each one of these nine patch sections together and then I will attach them to the other squares in that row. So this is two nine patches and one here and so on. And then I will carefully align them up. So let me get started with the nine patch blocks and the basting. So I've begun my basting. I've done the sides first on this one and then the top and bottom and I've done the same thing here. This doesn't really matter how you do it. I just did these, the top first and the sides to show what I meant with opposites. So with the nine patches here, I don't know if this is coming through, but I did the sides first and then the top and bottom on both of these. In the middle one, I did the top and bottom and then the sides. And I will do the exact opposite. So this one would be here and then this one would look like this. This one would look like this. So I'll be able to then have a straight edge and a folded edge that I'm gonna to stitch together. And hopefully that will keep my lines and my sharp points a lot better. So I'm gonna base this and I'm gonna start with assembly of this one. So I've put my little row together of three tiny blocks. And so this is what I've got with my little fussy cutting of my flowers. And then I've got these two already put together, so this is going to make the third. So I'm going to have four of these units that I've got to make. i got the other three already laid out but not basted and obviously not assembled. So I will finish the completion of this block, and then I will attach it to its neighboring squares. So I've got my nine patch block all assembled. And so now I'm going to attach it to these and make the entire bottom row of the block. Now I've got the whole bottom row of this block assembled and I will set that aside and work on the middle row. So I've got the middle section completed, two nine patch blocks with a plain square and I will assemble these to complete the row and then I can attach it to this one. So I'm gonna get these to connected and I'll be able to put it on. So as I'm putting this together, I'm noticing an interesting little occurrence. Every time that you go to attach a piece to another piece, you have to lift up this folded edge so that you can stitch it right to this piece so that you can get the papers out when you go to finish all this. Otherwise, if you stitch this down, it's a pain in the neck to try to get the papers out. So the seam is actually making the square bigger because it lacks the definition. If I was to plan this right, I would flip this around and do this here and then pull down with my stiletto and make sure 
then I've got this edge right on my seam and then stitch it because I'm stitching with the flat back method and when I stitch I'm going to go under or on top of the paper but under the fabric and then on top of the paper and under the fabric with this fold you get more fabric and if you're not careful you miss the edge and the way that I'm doing this from this side is because it's not being pulled tight from the other side I have to really kinda go in here at an angle and push it back to make sure I get to the edge of the paper and then get in here and it's these little tiny bits of growth that make it issues when you have the sashing to be attached so especially with a block that has 39 pieces you're gonna have growth no matter what you do and that's why you start at one end and then I stopped here and then I started here and worked my way in what I should have done because of the fact that I'm right-handed I should have started on this side and then turned it around this way and stitched it down. So just another little helpful hint on how to try to keep your growth to a minimum. So I completed assembly on my middle row and now I will work on assembling my top row. So I got the final nine patch done for my top row and I'm just going to put these together to finish off my top row and then I can assemble them to my other two. Now that I've got all three of my rows put together, I can now sew the lines together and finish the block. Now I have a completed J7 block.